Okay, we're going to take a look at how to um, find the um, a trig ratio given um, another um, ratio that we have. So, for example, um, if I have, um, I want you to find the cotangent of theta, and I tell you that the cosecant of theta is 25 twenty-fourths. Okay, so what I'm first going to do is I'm going to draw a representation of this. So I'm going to draw a right triangle. It doesn't really matter what the right triangle looks like. I'm going to draw a right triangle. This is typically what mine look like. Um, I'm going to call one of the angles theta that's not the right angle. Um, I pick the bottom left. I'm going to label my triangle. So this is my hypotenuse. That's the opposite. That's the adjacent. Okay. Once I have that, I'm going to think about what the cosecant is. The cosecant's the reciprocal of sine. Sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse, which means that this is now the hypotenuse over the opposite. So I now know this side is 25 and this side is 24, which means that I can use the Pythagorean theorem to find the third side. Now remember, since I have the hypotenuse, I'm going to have 25 squared equals 24 squared plus, um, and let's just call it a squared. Okay. So what I can do um, is I can subtract this to the other side so that I get the a by itself. So 25 squared minus 24 squared gives me a squared. Now you can do this whole thing on the calculator um, right away. So I can do the 25 squared minus the 24 squared um, and then hit enter and I get 49. So 49 is a squared. So that means that a is just 7. So now that I know this is 7, um, I can proceed even further. Now, you could have also known, because this is a Pythagorean triple, so if you are familiar with your Pythagorean triples, then you could have easily got the 7. Okay? So, now that I know that, I want to find the cotangent. Well, I think to myself, the tangent is opposite over adjacent, which means that the cotangent is going to be adjacent over opposite. So now, I have all three sides labeled, so I'm going to do the adjacent, which is 7, over the opposite, which is 24. So I get 7 24 So that's how I find another side, or another uh, trig ratio, given a ratio that I already have. Okay. Let's try another example. Okay. Sorry, I didn't mean to bump that. Um, if I have... Um, the cos or I want the cosine of theta and I have the cosecant of theta is root 5. Okay? So on this one I want to think well the cosecant's the reciprocal of sine. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse which means this is hypotenuse over opposite. This is really root 5 over 1 right? because there's nothing underneath. So I'm going to draw my triangle. I'm going to label one of my angles that's not the right angle as theta going to label my triangle. So that's the hypotenuse. This is opposite. This is adjacent. Well, now that I know that the cosecant is hypotenuse over adjacent, I now know my hypotenuse is root 5 and the opposite is 1. So what I can do is I can now find the third side finding the Pythagor or using the Pythagorean theorem. So I'm going to have root 5 squared equals 1 squared plus a squared. You can use any variable here that you want. I just either use a or b because it's with the Pythagorean theorem, which is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. But remember, your hypotenuse always has to be on the side that's by itself. So once again, I can have root 5 squared minus 1 squared, which gives me a squared. So I have, um, when I do this in the calculator, I'm going to make sure that I do parentheses, then the square root, then 5 head over to get out of the square root, and then square that, close my parentheses, square that whole thing, and then minus 1 squared. Sorry, I hit the wrong button. So then I hit enter, which gives us 4 is a squared. Huh? Well, that means that a is 2. So now I know this is 2. Well, once I know that piece of information, remember the cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So the adjacent over the hypotenuse is going to be 2 over root 5. But remember how we have this um, dilemma where we're not supposed to have roots in the denominator. So what I'm going to do to get rid of the root in the denominators, I'm going to multiply by 1, but it's going to be a very specific number 1. 
I'm going to multiply by root 5 over root 5. Remember, multiplying by 1 doesn't change the value of it. That's why I can do this. So 2 times root 5 just gives us 2 root 5, and root 5 times root 5 is just 5. I check to see if there's any reducing that I need to do with the numbers outside of the root, which there is not, so then I am all done. So I know the cosine is 2 root 5 over 5 when I've been given that the cosecant is root 5. Okay. Let's try one more. Okay. On this one, um, we want to find the um, sine of theta if the cotangent of theta is one third. Okay. So I'm going to draw my triangle, label one of my sides that's not the 90 degree angle as theta. Um, I'm going to label my triangle hypotenuse opposite and adjacent. The cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. Tangent is opposite over adjacent, so I'm going to flip that. So this is adjacent over opposite, which now means that I know that this uh, adjacent is 1 and this opposite is 3. Now on this one, we don't have the hypotenuse, so I'm just going to, to find the third side, I'm going to do 1 squared plus 3 squared equals, and I'm going to use c squared since we're talking about the hypotenuse. Okay. Um, now, you can put this whole thing in the calculator as well. This one's not super hard to figure out without the calculator, but um, we can do 1 squared plus 3 squared all at one time. You can do it separately and then add them together as well. Um, I like to do it all as one so I can just get done faster. Okay, so c squared is 10, which means that c is root 10. So this is root 10. So now that I have all three sides, I'm going to think to myself, well, the sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So I'm going to take the opposite, which is 3, and then the hypotenuse, which is root 10. But remember, we don't um, like to have the roots in the denominator. So I'm going to multiply by 1, but it's going to be a specific number 1, in that it's going to be root 10 over root 10. I'm multiplying by root 10 on the bottom so that I can get um, something that doesn't have a root in the denominator. So I'm going to have 3 times root 10 over root 10 times root 10, which is just 10. So then I have 3 root 10 over 10. I look to see if 3 and 10 can be reduced, which they can't, so then I'm all done. And that's how you find uh, another trig ratio when you have a trig ratio that's given. You need to um, uh, draw a right triangle and then label your sides, uh, attach the ratio that you know um, to the sides that they belong to, find the missing side, and then find the ratio that you're interested in.